Good morning, fellow Plexers. Today's video is going out to Travis, who I've been chatting with on and off, like I do a few people from the Plex support groups. And he's having trouble adding the movie The Impossible from 2012. So I thought I'd use my older Synology NAS and the test server on there to just do a little demonstration of how to name for a movie library, both manually and then with Filebot. I really haven't done a Filebot video in a while and there's new people to my YouTube channel. So I just thought I'd throw another quick naming video near the top of the feed. So without going into Plex's databases, I'm sorry, support articles, which you really should read. Well, maybe I'll go into it just a little bit. A lot of my other videos go into all this. So basically, you go to support.plex.tv slash articles. And depending whether you're naming for a movie or a series library, let's see, where are we here? I went too far. Let's make this full screen. I'm choking on finding the support article. Well, my videos are always unscripted and you get what you get. Okay, right here, your media. So, this is the main article for movies. Then this describes multiple editions, which is a PlexPass feature. This is multiple versions, and I can demonstrate that quickly when we get into manually naming. And then this is for TV shows. So, basically just follow the instructions in both of those. So let's check out The Impossible. Now for a Plex movie library, you can name from either IMDB or TMDB. For a TV series, it's either TMDB or TVDB, which is what I prefer for series. Okay, so we have the movie name here. You'll literally just copy and paste that. So if we go to IMDB, you'll see it's an exact match here. You can just copy that and then put the year in. Now, the original title was Low Impossible. That's not going to matter if you've got an English server. So let's try this a couple ways. Let's, um, let's go to my NAS structure on the older Synology NAS. So I have a shared media folder I have a couple of them for this test server. We're using the one just called Media. Inside that I have a sort folder for each library type. And inside the Movie Library sort folder are multiple movie libraries. We're going to be adding this dummy file. It's just five or six seconds of me saying something like test into this folder. So first off, let's create a folder. just so I could copy the dummy file into it. So I'm going to start with TMDB. I'm just going to copy that and I'll rename the movie folder that and I'll rename the video file the same way. Most basic Plex structure that you could imagine. I'm going to cut that and move it into this movie library. And then bring Plex in from off screen. This test server is set up to scan automatically and you'll see the activity start to spin up. And it just pulls all the correct metadata. And then you really have a choice of just 
just changing the poster if you want something different. You know, say you wanted this one that shows the name of the actors. All automatic. Now this depends on the actual movie library being set up correctly. So if I go to the advanced, you always want to be using the Plex Movie Scanner and the Plex Movie Agent. And the only thing I do under the advanced setting is I like to not have an automatic collection made until there's at least two movies. This is disabled by default, so when I create the library, I click that. That way a single movie won't create a collection that only has the one movie in it. It'll wait till you have two movies from that collection before the collection is created. Um, and then what else might you change? You might change this to hide um, the collection but show their items. And what that does in the movie library so I've got some manual collections I have here. You will not see those in this view if you change that setting, so watch. Hide collections but show their items. They disappear from library mode while still appearing in the collection mode. Now you can also hide movies that are in your library mode so they only appear in the collection, but I don't like that feature. So this is how I would set it up. Why see the collections when you only expect to see movies? And of course your collections are here. All right, so that's, that's naming from TMDB. Let's take that movie back out And you'll see Plex will scan automatically and remove the movie. There's a trash can icon and it's gone. So we can advance the naming a little bit. We can grab the database number and it really only needs to be in the folder but I usually put it in the folder and the movie file name itself. So that would be the curly braces and it would be tmdb lowercase dash that database number. So now that I have that I can copy all of that and rename the file the same way. And now I can move it back in. And Plex is going to automatically scan it on this server and add the movie back in. So of course it came back in with its original poster. I'd have to save that change again. So let's pull it back out again. And we already know the movie's named the same way from both TMD and IMDB. But you can also use IMDB's database number, which includes the TT part of it. So I'm going to adjust this to the same curly braces. Oh, I goofed up. It's got to be IMDB dash. So now if I copy the folder name I can apply it to the file name and really by using the proper structure and the proper um, source ID is what this is called in Plex's naming guide. Doing it properly means Plex will always scan the movie on the first scan. Let's put it in a different library. Let's put it in the DVR one. Back up here. 
I'm sorry, in the, um, which library? Oh, I put it in the DVR. Do I have a DVR created? Yes. I'm not so sure. Let me take it out of that and put it in the documentary. That's kind of what I meant to do. So Plex is scanning. And now the same movie with the IMDb source ID was added to this library without an issue. And if we edit it, we'll see that um, it's got the file name and folder name that we expected it to have. So that's manual naming for a movie. It's very easy. The two sources. Generally, in about 99% of the cases, the title and year is a match between the two databases. Sometimes for a new movie release, they don't match. But if you come back a month later, two months later, six months later, it's going to be a unified entry. It will be a match between the two databases. So let's, let's bring FileBot into this um, equation. All right, let me pull this out. And let me adjust this to something you might just typically find. When you find media on your doorstop, lots of times it's named in ways you might not expect. Oh, let's just call this H, let's call it X264 dash AAC dash six. So there's a lot of descriptive information in this folder name. So let, let us apply that to the file name too. And let's just see, before we use FileBot, let's see what Plex thinks of this goofy structure. All right, let's put it in the kids' library because that hasn't had the movie in it yet. So even with that goofy ass structure, Plex scanned the movie in. But that's horrible structure to use, and it's not going to work in every case. If you, if you leave movies named in the raw format when you find them on your doorstep, some of them aren't going to scan, and you'll have to use the dreaded fix match, which no one should ever use. It means your media is not structured and named properly. This is a crutch, and it's a dangerous crutch to start using. Fix your media. All right, so let's get that out of here. Now, if this was my desktop computer, I could open FileBot and drag this folder in. I can't do that because this file is on my Synology NAS, but I can right-click it. I'm sorry. I can right-click it and open with other application and pick FileBot from that menu. So, FileBot has some options. The most basic option is to just click the match button and we want to ignore the first choice because that's episode mode. We go down to the next section, movie mode, we can pick the movie database. We can't pick IMDB here, but we can pick the movie database. And that's not doing us much good. Um, I think FileBot's become a little buggy, but what I can do, I can right click on it and choose edit the format. And I can look here, so it's looking at it like it's an episode. So let's see, what can I do? Am 
I can't do much here. So I'm looking at recent formats. Let me just pick this Drive Media Plex ID. So that's not doing much for me. So I'm not I'm not a basic FileBot user, so I'm not going to try to figure that out. Let me open it again with FileBot. FileBot has some built-in expressions. Now these are my custom expressions. So I have to hold down the shift key. Once you add your own custom expression, you can't see FileBot's expressions without holding down the shift key. So they have organized movies for Plex. And this is a nice expression, but I don't use it and I'll tell you why. So it's turning this into this, exactly like my manual naming using TMDB, but only in the folder name, not the file name. Remember, it's not needed there. I do it as just an extra step. But this default expression creates a folder called media, and then a subfolder called movies, and then it creates the movie folder. This would be great if you're renaming on a local computer, and everything you renamed would, would be created in this folder structure. FileBot does not have the permission to create this structure on my NAS. But if I already had a shared folder and a subfolder called Movies, I could use this expression. So instead, I'm going to use my own expression. And you'll see I've got the presets um, labeled with a one dash and a two dash for my two most frequently used expressions. One for a movie and one for a TV series. So if I click that, this is going to create structure in place. And if I slide over, it's going to create the movie properly with the source ID for the folder name. And then it's going to do the same thing for the file name, plus it's going to add media characteristics into it. Now I put those media characteristics into brackets, even though Plex's movie naming guide doesn't mention brackets at all. In its TV series name and guide, it says anything in brackets is ignored by the scanner. I don't know if that's a feature of the movie scanner, but I'm doing it in case it is one day and it just works. I used to just have a space dash space as if I was naming for versioning. So check out the Plex guide on movie versioning to see how that works. And I'll give you an example of that in a second. So if I simply hit rename, and I'll have to refresh my view, you see we've created the folder structure in place and we've added this more detailed file name. Now naturally this is just going to work. So let's cut that and let's put it in the 4K library because we haven't added this movie there yet. It's scanning, and it added it. And you can see it's the structure I just created. So let's go back to FileBot for a second. Let's grab this movie out of here. Well, it's really more like a seven or six second video clip. Okay, so let's open it with FileBot. And let me edit my expression. It needs to be full screen. So I'm going to edit this expression. And then I'm going to copy everything I have to show it to you. change the text color and let's make it bigger and bolder so in the curly braces name and a space and then within parentheses I have the curly braces and Y for year then I have a space and then I have within curly braces overall I have this info that looks up the source ID for IM or for TMDB. 
if I simply change this to IMDB, we'd be pulling that source ID. So then I have um, the separation between the folder and the file name, and then it's a repeat of all of this. So that would give you the basic structure that I manually did at first with a TMDB ID. Now this extra structure is looking for clues within the folder or file name of a special edition. Now this won't um, pick up any keyword to make random editions, but if it finds keywords like unrated, director's cut, remastered, it will add those automatically to the um, file name, not the folder name. So then I use the space dash space as part of Plex versioning to then put this extra information into brackets. So in the curly braces, we have these options for video format, video codec, audio format, audio codec, um, all within curly braces, each in a, sp a space in between. And then I put the bracket to end it. And now this is something the developer of Hot Filebot helped me with. And I don't think I copied everything from... Alright, so I missed... Maybe I shouldn't use the mouse. Let's try this again. I think I got it this time. Okay, so the developer of FileBot helped me come up with, with this little bit of wonderful coding. This looks inside the container file for both English subtitles or unlabeled subtitles. So let me see if I can show you that separately so it makes sense. Let me go into this movie library and I need something that has embedded subtitles in it. Okay, so this this has embedded subtitles in it. So if I right click and open it with MKV tool Nix, inside the container file you'll see embedded subtitles. And the language needs to be set for Plex to automatically use subtitles. If these weren't set to English and you had it automatically set to play say forced English subtitles and there was a forced subtitle that was unlabeled as English Plex wouldn't know how to play it. So what I want is the FileBot expression to tell me about the subtitles and if it finds the English subtitles it adds this to the file name. And if, if it finds a subtitle that's not described it adds the undescribed subtitle. I don't care if there's other foreign language subtitles or not. That's not really my concern. I just want to make sure there's English embedded subtitles or unknown subtitles which are probably English and that way I can go in and quickly fix the media with MKV Toolnix to display properly in Plex or if there's no subtitles at all I need to get external subtitles. But this is a lot. You don't need all that if you don't want it. Basically you could just use this much and this will cover common um, addition tags. If you wanted to use a little extra, add this in and that gives you some information of the file name about um, the actual media file itself. This subtitle stuff is extra. Now this little bit at the end, that helps in renaming external subtitles. So I've got other file bot videos that go into the the subtitle bit more. All right, so let's um, let's show you another expression. So I can rename it for IMDb structure 
um, or rename it for IMDB without creating structure. So I'll do the structure part. So you see I've got the IMDB TT number in it and the rest is all the same. So if I hit rename, let's go back to wherever the file was. You see it's now got the IMDB source ID in both the folder and the file name. So my other FileBot videos have all my custom expressions listed. FileBot's pretty great by itself. I don't know why I couldn't get the movie renamed. By just the match. This should work, but it's not. And to be honest with you, I'm not going to use FileBot that way. I used to be able to right click and edit the format and figure out what's going on. And I probably can do it manually now that I'm thinking about it. If I simply copied that, all right, so. Now that's going to probably work the next time I open it. Now this is a rabbit hole I probably shouldn't have gone down. Yeah, so I don't know why this isn't working, but again, I don't use FileBot this way at all. And if you're using FileBot for the first time on a local computer, their organized movies for Plex or episodes works fine, even if you're just going if you're going to move it someplace else afterwards. It's, it'd be a great little holding ground for um, that, and I can actually I can actually show that. So let's copy this, and let me go to my local setup. And I have a, a media folder here too for testing purposes. Let's paste that in here. And then let's see what I have. This is what FileBot can create. So let me just get rid of that. That's gone now. So now if I go back in here and I'll open this up with FileBot again and I'll use their expression Organize movies for Plex. You see this folder it doesn't exist. I just deleted it. And now if I hit rename, as long as I'm doing it locally, FileBot could create that folder. It could create this library folder. And then it creates the movie folder name and renames and moves the movie file or the movie file into that folder. So on a local system for renaming, this is all you need. Even if you're just going to right click, cut this and move it to another location, to your NAS, to a portable hard drive, you can do all your naming right on your local computer and not even get into my custom expressions to have a perfectly compliant Plex file name. So I did promise one other thing, the video is getting long, I thought it might be short. Let's go into versioning. So say you had two versions of this movie. Let me just copy this outside of that folder. Versioning is simply space dash space 1080p. And let's move this one in. space dash space 720p. So now let's move this whole thing back to the NAS. And we'll put it in the main movie library. So Plex is scanning and we'll only see one poster appear. Alright, so if we go to library mode we only have the one poster. If I click into it, play, and hit play, Plex is just going to play the best version it thinks it can handle. 
If I click the three dots for more, and then choose play version, now I see the two options. And because they're the same file, it's going to give the same bit rate and the same resolution. So this is just a screen record on my system, which is why it says 2K. It's about, um, oh, it's five seconds long. It's just a dummy file. It's not a real video. Plexers. Just something I recorded as a test file that I use. So that's versioning. Um, some people like that because they might have a, a high bit rate 1080p version on their server and they might have a lower bit rate 720p. And if they're sharing with friends and family, somebody with an old Roku device that should be thrown out because it can only connect to the, the Wi-Fi network at 2.4 gigahertz and it, it's only compatible H.264 video. Well, a server owner like this could have a lower bit rate 720p H.264 version on their server and they could have maybe a higher bit rate, maybe around 15 to 30 megabits per second, 1080p HEVC or H.265 encoded. They mean the same thing. And now Plex will dull out the appropriate version for the, the device. In today's modern age where you can get a Walmart O&N Google TV device second gen for $19.99, it doesn't make sense to have that much um, extra information in your storage system to cater to an old device like a Roku, an original Roku stick that, that can't do HEVC or H.265. So, that's not, that's not really like a political statement or opinion. It just doesn't make economic sense, even if you consider hard drive prices very cheaply. If somebody can replace an old device like that with a $20 one from Walmart, there's just no reason not to. Okay, so this is getting long, but that is how you manually rename files. And this is how to use FileBot a couple ways. And I have other FileBot videos where I list and show all my custom expressions. But the built-in expressions for FileBot are really enough, especially if you're naming locally. Um, it just creates this media folder, and then it creates a movies or a TV shows folder, depending on what you're naming to, and you can just let it do its thing and then move that to wherever you need it to be. Or you can make media media slash movies, your movie library on a local system, and that makes it easy. You rename with FileBot, it's automatically in your library. So, thanks for watching, and Travis, I know this is long, but I just wanted to cover all the basics for you. Um, and remember, you should be using the latest scanner and agent, and your Plex server should be updated too, the latest version, of the latest stable version, let's say. So Travis and everybody else, thanks for watching and happy plexing.